my name is Kay Simpson, and I've recently completed postgraduate study at the Warburg Institute in London. My research very broadly focuses on intersections between religion, science, and culture, and my paper given on June 4th, 2020 at Sensan's Cold War and the End Times Symposium is titled, From Precaution to Prophecy, Fault Lines of Popular Science in the Jupiter Effect. To begin by introducing my title, The Jupiter Effect is a 1974 popular science book by physicists John Gribben and Stephen Plattman, published as part of a larger boom of popular science publishing in the 1970s. It was a bestseller and gained notoriety because of its claim that an alignment of the planets in March of 1982 would result in a devastating earthquake along the San Andreas fault line in California. While Playfully aware of the astrological implications of their thesis, Rubin and Plattman were both well-respected physicists who claimed to be building solely upon, quote, sound scientific reasons. To really rapidly summarize the main proposal of the Jupiter effect, Rubin and Plattman basically asserted a knock-on chain of astrophysical and geophysical triggers which would be initiated by an alignment of the planets in March of 1982. This alignment would create a tidal pull on the sun which would cause increased sunspot activity. The sunspot activity would cause a greater eruption of solar flares, which would interfere with the Earth's atmosphere. This atmospheric disturbance would cause a change in the Earth's rotation, which would finally trigger the release of decades of built-up stress along the San Andreas fault line, resulting in particularly devastating earthquakes in the urban areas of San Francisco and parts of Los Angeles. Despite becoming a bestseller, the Jupiter effect was met with a barrage of criticism from the mainstream scientific community. Charles Richter, the famed seismologist, dismissed it as, quote, pure astrology in disguise, end quote. Belgian astronomer Jean Maes demonstrated further how Plagiman and Gribben had based the Jupiter effects theories on misrepresented data sets, outdated studies, and contradictory evidence. In short, that there was a lack of any compelling statistical evidence to make the catastrophic prediction of the Jupiter effect anything more than speculation. Indeed, there was no grand destructive Californian earthquake in 1982. However, by that time Gribben had already retracted the original predictions of the Jupiter effect, admitting that he and Plagiman had got it, quote, completely wrong, unquote. More telling in Gribben's retraction, however, was the disparagement he aimed at the so-called, quote, cultists, weirdos, and the wide-eyed doomsayers, unquote, whom he felt had hijacked his and Plagiman's scientific ideas to support more metaphysically intoned models of impending catastrophe. He was referring to the repeated citation of the Jupiter effect outside mainstream scientific circles and news outlets, particularly its remarkable popularity in esoteric fringe writings, popular astrology, and Christian evangelical literature. These works, of course, had very different audiences and publishing contexts, but they almost all cited the Jupiter Effect's 1982 earthquake prediction within a larger, often prophetic framework of some impending transcendental or apocalyptic cataclysm. So we're left with the question of how a book like the Jupiter Effect, which aimed to speak to the latest advances in geophysical scientific theory, ends up being so easily mobilized in these religious and popular apocalyptic contexts. I'm interested in this episode not in terms of what the Jupiter effect got wrong, but rather how its ideas and reception in these non-mainstream science contexts speak to a wider cultural nerve that the book's catastrophic prediction hit upon. Indeed, the responses to and reception of the Jupiter effect reveal a wider set of concerns about what it means to contemplate catastrophe on a global scale. These are concerns which, while they can be extremely evocative in metaphysical and religious contexts, I argue, are innately rooted in the development of the Cold War Earth sciences and geopolitics, which the scientific ideas of the Jupiter effect draws from. So to demonstrate this, I want to briefly sketch a picture of the advances in scientific theory which the Jupiter effect was responding to, and then situate this within a wider cultural and geopolitical context. Paradigm shifts in the Earth sciences during the 1960s had reconceived the Earth as a series of dynamic plates rotating against each other. The so-called plate tectonics revolution had rewritten textbooks and opened the door to a more holistic understanding of the Earth's geophysical processes, such as earthquakes, something that environmental historian Naomi Oreskes refers to as, quote, 
the first global theory ever to be generally accepted in the entire history of the earth sciences." Unquote. Crucial to the acceptance of plate tectonic theory was the discovery of seafloor spreading as a mechanism which drives continental drift. This discovery of seafloor spreading came from data gathering initiatives largely funded by national defense expenditure since the end of the Second World War. Indeed, in this Cold War atmosphere of synoptic scale weapons and the threat of war on a planetary scale, came the need for accurate environmental data on a new global scale to serve these national security ends. Cold War historian Jacob Hamblin has written extensively about the development of the Earth in environmental sciences during the Cold War as part of a, quote, scientific worldview obsessed with environmental monitoring, manipulation, dynamism, and vulnerability, unquote. The adoption of total war thinking on a synoptic scale using the global language of nuclear threat. Alternatively put in the words of historian of science and Cold War studies, Michael Aaron Dennis, quote, Going about the task of understanding how to destroy the enemy, the Earth sciences produced a new picture of the Earth and its complexities. Amidst the materiality of destruction came the possibility of reconfiguring our understanding of our planet. Unquote. Perhaps some of the best visual encapsulations of this sentiment are the famous Earthrise and Blue Marble images of the Earth seen from the void produced during the Apollo missions. They are images intrinsically connected to both the rise of the environmentalist consciousness as well as a product of the space race with its origins in the nuclear arms diplomacy of the times. As I move towards concluding, I'd like to use this image of the whole Earth as a kind of shorthand as I pivot back to the Jupiter effect and its reception. I intend to use this whole Earth image as an illustration of this vulnerable awareness of the planetary scope of new Cold War technology and knowledge. It's thus revealing to observe that this image conforms both the cover of the Jupiter effect, as well as one of the most famous and widely read of the, quote, doomsayer publications, unquote, to use Gribben's phrase, which cited the Jupiter effect as evidence, Hal Lindsay's 1980s countdown to Armageddon. To provide some quick background, Lindsay is a best-selling American evangelical author who came to prominence during the 1970s with his series of popular apocalyptic books. Lindsay was one of the most prominent 20th century proponents of the so-called premillenarian dispensationalist method of biblical interpretation. It's a view which envisions Christ's second coming as imminent and close at hand, to be preceded by the horrific seven-year tribulation period. This tribulation would include the coming of the Antichrist and the unleashing of God's wrath in many disastrous forms such as floods, plagues, and earthquakes. Thus, Lindsay was using the Jupiter Effect's 1982 earthquake prediction as evidence of the fulfilled prophecy of an impending Armageddon. Central to the premillenarian dispensationalism adopted by Lindsay is the concept of the rapture, that the Christian faithful will be spared the tribulation and battle of Armageddon. What I'd like to note in particular is that there's a suggestive parallel here between this evangelical paradox of life through destruction and the Cold War military-industrial complex fixated on both mapping and mitigating total destruction, a perspective which I and others have argued helped birth the Cold War Earth sciences and out of which the Jupiter effect emerged. The cover image of the Jupiter effect is a golden stylized Earth as a grid of shifting cuboid segments devoid of any geographic specificity, dynamic and totalizing a synoptic, scientific perspective of the Earth, segmented and ordered, but nonetheless prone to sudden movement and dislocation. Meanwhile, the cover of Lindsay's work features a partial Earth disintegrating within an hourglass, the march of time leading the world to an inevitable and total decimation. To wrap up, I'd like to re-emphasize that dismissing the Jupiter effect as just a historic example of deficient and sensationalist popular science is really to view it through the wrong prism. As a node of controversy within a larger web of the development of the earth sciences, Cold War geopolitics, and popular apocalypticism, the Jupiter effect and its reception reveals how entangled these histories actually are. Thank you.